comes courtesy of Wiggins. They sent over this beautiful body wave hair. I don't think I've had body wave from this company before, but I have definitely reviewed for this company before. So they sent over four bundles and a frontal. I still have one of the bundles left, which I'll show you guys in just a moment. Let me tell you what is special about this hair. Like, do you see this? This is a, actually a 13 by 6 lace frontal closure. Usually the standard lace frontal is about 13 by 4 inches. So it goes 13 inches across and 4 inches back. Even when you do a closure, it's usually 4 by 4. So what's special about this frontal is that it is 13 by 6. So you get an extra 2 inches of space going backwards. And I am absolutely in love with the way it looks. I had to go ahead and bleach the knots. You guys know I do not bleach the knots as often with my frontals anymore because usually I'll just use like a foundation powder and an eyeshadow or I even will use um, the little leg spray. I can't find it right now. This. This is like, what is this? This is like airbrush leg spray and this works amazing. But because I was going to have a six inch lace frontal um and i don't think i've ever had one of those before i definitely wanted to bleach the knots to get the full experience and it's very seamless like the way the frontal laid it almost was like a set of it coming straight across it kind of was uneven which i like because it makes it look a little bit more natural and it makes it a lot harder to find that line of demarcation in the front of course the baby here also helps to kind of camouflage that as well but it came out amazing and then of course the length of the hair is body wave so what i did was i only used three bundles i didn't want to have 22 24 24 26 and then the ends look super sparse but then in the middle it looks super thick and bulky so when i constructed my wig i made it using the hot glue gun method i wanted it to be gradient so with the front so it's a 20 inch front so 22 24 26 and then that other bundle is here and this is that second 24 inch bundle when you receive your bundles they come in a cute little bag like this and it tells you what length it is and this is what the hair looks like in its natural state super beautiful so if you want to keep this texture here i would recommend just making the wig and styling it without um adding any water or co-washing it to keep this look but you can see the hair has a nice bounce to it so regardless actually you know what let's just jump into the video and then i'll explain it through the talk through and then i'll come back at the end with my thoughts on this wig so before we jump into the video, make sure that you hit that bell button so you never miss a video from me again. If you're feeling these tutorials, go ahead and hit that thumbs up so I know that you love them. Also, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Now let's jump into the tutorial. So jumping right into it, this is the wig that I constructed. Do you see how much lace this is? It is crazy. I just made a wig using my hot glue gun method where I sew the lace closure down to a wig cap and I glue the tracks on behind it. Really, really, really nice. So one thing is when you cut your tracks when you're making your wig, you have to comb out the hair or brush it out. That way you can um, pull out all of the excess shedding from cutting the wefts. Now I'm going to go ahead and slay the wig. So the first thing I do is I add an elastic band. you got to go ahead and get your needle and thread game on point. Now before I sew it on, I have to put the wig on and measure exactly where I want it to go. Now making wigs is definitely a learning process. What I learned about this is I should not have pulled the closure in front of the wig cap. That's a whole other topic for another day. But it is a little bit bigger than what I want it to go. So it's a good thing that I went ahead and put the wig on to see where I wanted the um, elastic band to sit. Because I should have pulled the lace closure back a little bit when making the wig. But I'm going to have to cut um, a lot of the hair um, or the lace along the ears because it's definitely too big. Um, I was able to slay it and you're going to see I'm going to slay it step by step here on YouTube. But the first step was to definitely cut off a lot of that excess um, lace. It is 13 inches going across. I've measured before and I believe across my head is like 11, 11 and a half inches. So it's always important for me to cut off at least a half an inch on each on each side. Sorry about that. Um, to make it fit the way that I um, want it to so that it cuffs perfectly around my ears. This is a process you should do gradually because you don't want to just cut a bunch and then you can't take it back and then your lace is too short. But as you can see, it really fits 
too big and it's my mistake um it has nothing to do with the hair itself or the lace um when making the wig i completely forgot that it was two inches bigger and i wasn't paying attention so um normally if you've ever seen my tutorials on how i make a wig you know that i pull the frontal a little bit in front of the cap before i start sewing and i pin it down i did that same technique with this and i didn't have to so when you're making a wig with a 13 by 6 lace frontal go ahead and line the frontal up exactly with the cap and do not pull it forward if you've ever made a wig then you know exactly what i'm talking about so i'm going to go ahead and cut off a little bit more of the lace you don't want to cut off all of the lace until you're ready to put it on because if i want to put this closure onto or this whole wig onto a mannequin head i want to use that excess lace to be able to pin it down and not make a hole um, in the lace i'm actually going to be wearing so here i am um, adding the elastic band while the wig was on my head i kind of measured and um pinpointed exactly where the um elastic band would fit perfectly and this was it so now we're done with that and this is how it looks you can see how much parting i'm going to have and then here i'm kind of showing you in the back um even though the wig was too big at the bottom you see my kitchen then you see my elastic band then you see the wig cap and then you see the wig the wig actually fit, fits perfectly in the back but as you can see it comes forward a little bit or a lot bit too much so I'm definitely going to have to go ahead and bond this wig down for it to fit how I want it to. Just the elastic band will not work only because I did make the wig too big. So I went ahead and combed it out. The hair gets definitely really big without any product once you co-wash it and make a wig. But as soon as you add product, it's going to curl right back up. So now um, I'm pretty much confident that I can go ahead and cut off the remainder of the excess lace. You never want to cut straight across. You kind of want to go zigzag. And as you can see there, I kind of nicked the actual hair on the lace. So if you ever wonder, is it okay to cut the lace or cut the hair on the lace? It's definitely a yes. Like if you make the wig too big, like how I did, and you can't do anything with it, you could actually cut an inch of the lace off. I definitely would not recommend like cutting your beautiful lace that you just bought. But if you end up in that type of situation, you didn't have a choice, you could. And it would actually work out fine. So moving right along, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the stocking cap underneath you definitely want to adjust it before you start because once you start you won't be able to move that stocking cap ever again now i'm going to take the yellow got to be glued i believe this is the original and i'm just going to take a healthy amount of that and put it along the hairline exactly where i want it to go now i always put the got to be glue in front of my hairline and not on my edges because i don't want them to come out even more than they have from having kids. I'm gonna take on top of that and add the free spray. I kinda do this in a fast motion just cause I don't have time to do like one after the other. The idea is to wait until the glue or the gel becomes clear. Obviously I did not follow directions. So you're gonna see that um, whenever the lace is finished, you're gonna see that it does look a little bit chalky and it's because I was impatient. But I go ahead and I take the end of the rat tail comb and I use the end to pretty much press the lace into um, my hairline so that it kind of looks like it's melted in there. I also kind of rub it a little bit because I don't want the hairline to look blunt. So I kind of pull a lot of that hair in the front um, to go in front of the line where the lace starts. That way it just kind of like you can't really even tell where it starts and where it ends if that makes any sense. So I'm going to go ahead and create my baby hair. This lace did come with a little bit of baby hair on its own but if in the process of making this wig and all that kind of lost it so I made my own I'm using the pull method here which I often do and this is just a lazy way of tweezing the hairline don't do this at home if you're not um, <laughs> confident enough to do it because you can make a hole and that's all the hair that I pulled out so that the hairline looks a little bit more natural and thin still have a little bit of bulk right there so I went ahead and pulled that as well I'm gonna take more of that got to be glued gel and I'm going to just swoop the baby hair. I've said this before, but if you are getting frustrated with your baby hair and it's not coming out exactly the way you want, just go ahead and do the best you can. Let it dry. Take a break. And come back to it. But you want to go ahead and begin the process of forming it in the direction that you want it to go. Let it dry. And then come back and you can kind of check your work to see if it's too full, too thin. You know. 
Now my toughest part, or I think everybody's toughest part, is the sideburns. The trick to making the lay, or I'm sorry, the lace lay on your sideburns is going ahead and making sure that you shave your sideburns. Not everybody's going to shave their sideburns. If you want a tutorial on how I do so, let me know. But when you have um, hair right there, it kind of um, makes it a little bit harder for the glue to stick, if that makes any sense. So that's why it didn't stick on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and reapply my got to be glued. Let it kind of get um, tacky a little bit while messing with the baby hair on this side reform it a little bit always right there by my temple is where it's always hard to make it look really flawless so I let that sit for a minute and then I went ahead and stuck it down kind of reinforced it with that free spray because that free spray works almost just as good as the actual got to be glued I'm going to do the same process on the opposite side add a little bit of that glue I added a lot more over there because that side just seemed like it was so much harder to stick you can see underneath it's white and it's white because I did not let it dry clear. Now I'm going to just take these wrapping, I don't know what these are called, but I'll have them linked down below. Um, Barbara's uses, um, I think it's like around the neck. Hairstylist uses for like finger waves and different um, styles. I use them usually on my baby hair because once you lay that got to be glue gel, um, if you put a scarf, it might stick to the scarf as it dries and it's not going to stick here. Now I'm going to use some conditioner. I'll have this conditioner linked down below. It smells so good as you see me kind of take a little bit of a whiff. And on top of that, I'm going to add my whiff, my wet by Sebastian. Both I get the generic version from Sally's, but I will have them linked down below. And this just was the combo I chose for today. While um, the edges or the baby hair dried, I went ahead and styled the rest of the hair. Before I even did that, I dismerged my entire wig or the, the length of it with um, water to make it easier. And this is how it looks. Um, the baby hair looks so good to me, in my opinion, that I don't mind wearing it straight back. So I'm going to kind of cheat and I use my Care Care Silk and Sheen along the baby hair to kind of um, moisten it up so that you couldn't see that white chalkiness that it had before. And kind of run that into the hair so that the entire head looks a little bit more wet. As you see the sideburns still look thick. I did go ahead and fix that um, later. I'm not sure if I did it later in the video off, off camera. But just go ahead and tweeze it out. Here's a little bit of a close up. A little bit too close. But you can't really see where it starts. And this was just a quick not even a full in-depth tutorial so you guys see how amazing that looks now pull it back a little bit and let's show you guys the actual parting gorgeous I am impressed you can see that yellow wig cap that I had on before if I had put makeup on the wig cap this would look so much better so whenever you have your wig cap and it's not exact to your skin use your foundation powder to um, kind of pat on top of your cap so that way your scalp will look even more flawless it'll look like the hairline looks but I'm impressed and I am pleased with my work for today hopefully I kind of went slow and in detail enough for you guys to grasp the concept and use it for yourself make your parting exactly how you want and go ahead and add your products I am using the wet and I'm using the mousse all linked down below and gonna finesse the hair Now you guys remember how the wig was a little bit too big for me before and look it fits perfectly see I know what I'm doing with these wigs I'm getting so good at this y'all I'm about to be coming for Eric and Tay and all these other stylists because I am learning a lot if you guys are into hair do it try it out play with it make it fun and slate your hair yourself now I'm going to go ahead and make a half up half down bun. I'm going to speed through it and not really talk about it because you guys have seen me do this a million times. But the hair itself was a breeze and amazing to work with. The lace was beautiful and amazing. No excess tangling or shedding. Make sure you guys check out Wiggings. I have all of their information in the description bar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that your lace is a flawless like this. Hope that you guys learned something. Don't forget to let me know what other videos you guys want to see from me next. Next. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Finish that bun, girl. Twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. Make sure that when you make a bun, your tracks are not showing in the back. This is the results, and I love you guys. See you in the next one.